Our boys at DARPA have done it again. On this channel, we love DARPA. There are mad scientists. There are out-of-the-box thinkers. And on this channel, we love them. What do they do now? DARPA launches Nomar's USX-1 Defiant. USX Defiant. Let's do this, get into this a little bit. A mysterious vessel spotted in Washington State is a new DARPA drone ship. USX-1 Defiant is meant to operate with no humans on board for long periods while carrying variants, variants eyed for future production. That's an automated ship. No humans involved whatsoever. That's the future. That's a big part of the future of the United States Navy and navies across the world. Our automated drone ships. And this is a story I've been aware of for a little while because of a different story, and I'm going to bring that to your attention. But as we scroll through, we're not going to read the whole story. It'll be linked, of course, so you can check it out. This is Defiant. She's obviously under tight security. A lot of what you need to know, you can't see and you don't need to know it. They do go through her specs. Defiant, U.S. military has historically categorized uncrewed vessels like Defiant with lengths under 200 feet. So she's under 200 feet. This is a view of her. That's a good picture too, by the way. I love the, I love the bow. The bow is almost reminiscent of uh, one of our battleships. This is the box launcher for the uh, missile systems that are going to be aboard her. An ADL fires a missile during a testing on land. That's from BAE Systems. This is a, a test from last year. U.S. Navy had uh, tested a couple of Mariner at at rear and ranger in front sailed together in 2023 and these were fully automated at the time they're not giving a lot of information about this and you can understand why this is a picture from darpa of a mid-sea refueling of one of these automated ships and that's a we're going to actually get a little bit into that but here's uh, one of the more important parts. Defiant was also designed with ease of production in mind, and Serco has previously told the war zone that the USVs could be produced outside of traditional shipyards, including by rail yards if needed. This can make the design of future variants and derivatives thereof very attractive to the U.S. Navy, which has been facing increasingly worrisome struggles to acquire traditional crewed warships. This has come amid broader concerns that the U.S. Navy's shipyard capacity or lack thereof for shipbuilding new naval vessels and maintaining existing ones. That has come amid broader concerns about U.S. shipyard capacity or lack thereof for building new naval vessels and maintaining existing ones. The U.S. shipbuilding industry continues to be grossly outpaced by that of China, America's cheap, chief current global competitor despite efforts to narrow the gap in recent years and that was actually spoken of last night in the president's address to the country he is uh putting together a white house commission of sh u.s shipbuilding and he's going to create tax incentives to bring shipbuilding back to the united states he says we'll see what comes of it as we continue, they talk, they talk about the testing that was done with uh, unmanned ships, fully automated ships. And this is a great article. But this is a video from Naval News specifically about the vessel in question. This is at Serco's announcement at uh, the Naval Conference about this specifically. I think I just won my taxes. 
Hello, I'm Aaron Matthew Lariosa, DC-based contributor with Naval News. We are here on the show floor of Surface Navy Association 2025. I'm currently here with Ryan Matta, Marine Engineering Manager here at Serco North America, Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering Firm, and the Deputy Program Manager for the DARPA NOMARS program. Thank you for your time, Ryan. Uh, you know, Naval News has been following uh, NOMARS, Civilly Serco's uh, demonstrator for a while. Would you be able to share any updates with us? Yeah, very exciting news. Uh, this month we'll be launching the vessel at Nichols Brothers Boat Builders um, in Washington. Uh, we're waiting on the next high tide and she's going to go out. From there we'll proceed to about two months of uh, dock trials and testing before we enter a very large and an uh, extensive demonstration of the vessel and its capabilities. And clearly, and clearly that's the, what this article has been about through uh, the war zone, is this, the vessel has been launched and testing has begun. I can't wait to see the uh, results. Looking forward to it. And just to review for our viewers, I, we uh, have the models out. I know we've covered these, but would you just be able to give a summary? Right. So the ship we're building is much like this form factor here. It's around 300 tons. It's around a 55 meter class MUSV. It's completely unmanned. Some of the key features of the vessel is a 90% reliability at sea for a year and uh, autonomous refueling on the receiving end. We recently proved out the autonomous refueling features of the vessel using the PMS 406 O boats with Surf Devron. Um, that system successfully demonstrated the ability to pump water without anyone on the receiving end of the probe uh, back in September. And uh, we'll be also demonstrating that uh, with the DARPA vessel uh, after we dem after we launch. Which is one of the key features of having an automated humanless escort fleet. They've got to be able to refuel at sea. And you can see the sea state there is virtually placid. So doing it in a placid sea is clearly possible. We'll see what happens when you get into different sea states. But we will call this encouraging as of right now we'll call it encouraging we'll see what it leads i think that it's not an insurmountable thing whatsoever but it will take time but it is encouraging and this uh, other great vessel we see here so uh, we had a program in the U.S. for LUSV. I think that's going to be moved back a little bit, something more in the medium range, like an O-boat, or perhaps, we're lucky, something like the DARPA Nomar's boats um, are, are uh, currently in the thought process, if you listen to Ali, uh, Admiral Daly's responses uh, yesterday. Um, what he's referring to is that in the conference where this video has taken place, uh, the Admiral, Admiral Daly is who he's speaking of, in his speech said that the Navy wants to turn away from thinking of large automated vessels like the size of a destroyer or a cruiser or something along those lines into smaller, more displaced, more scattered, able to carry the weapon systems required, but not being such a large target. They're thinking disbursement. They're thinking asset disbursement. And when you, when you see the Chinese capabilities when it comes to missiles, the DF-17, the DF-26, disbursement is very critical. You don't want to have lar everything. All your eggs in one basket isn't going to work. You've got to have the disbursement of assets. That way your capabilities remain intact with the loss of a few of them. That's what the Admiral is referring to in regards to the automated shipbuilding program, moving away from large uncrewed vessels, cruiser size, destroyer size, even carriers, to smaller, more dispersed. I support that 100%. Um, to Q&A. So what we're trying to prove out here, though, is the feasibility of completely unmanned vessels versus partially unmanned. This is a much larger form factor than anybody's done a completely unmanned vessel rather than an optionally unmanned vessel. We were able to take a lot of advantage of the space that we retain on the vessel that typically would be reserved for human, humans on board, like galleys, passageways, um, you know, facilities. And uh, we use that to pump reliability and performance, endurance, range, payload capacity back into the ship. So you're seeing a much larger payload fraction capable of carrying a bunch of mission systems. Uh, we have a very unique uh, power and propulsion system uh, that's incredibly resilient and also can provide a lot of cooling and power to those payloads. Um, and I think this is going to be, if we successfully demonstrate, which we plan to, this is going to be a real game changer in the space. It's really going to change a lot of thinking in, in the naval um, surface warfare and unmanned systems spheres. You notice those black box launchers they have on the, uh, on the model there? Those are clearly the missile systems as we saw in the war zone piece here. Let me bring up the picture of it. Here we are. 
that's these. And their whole point is modularity. They want to be able to put different mission packages on these vessels, which of course is a great idea. But this is one of the packages they're talking about. Uh, unclear if this has reloads in it or not. I, I have no ability to say that. But modularity, mission flexibility is a big thing when they're talking about this uh, new automated warship. Humanless warship. DSX-1 Defiant. It'll be... It's going to be something else. And the ability to put different mission packages on there is going to be critical to its success. Critical. Uh, you know, um, CNO, her Project 33 plan really emphasizes USVs, and at the show floor at SNA, we've seen, we've seen a lot of companies with USV concepts. What would you say is that uh, Circle can park compared to your competitors? I think the technology, the integration of um, mature yet slightly modified technologies to make the platform incredibly reliable over long periods of time is going to drive a greatly reduced cost per mission hour. Um, and then also some of the philosophy is a maintenance, so ra the Ramsey aspects of the vessel, it's going to put more payload out on the ocean, more mission systems out on the ocean for much cheaper than the Navy does traditionally. One of the historic problems with unmanned systems is um, they promise to keep sailors safe or pilots safe um, in, the, in the aerial field, but they don't turn, tend to be less expensive than their manned um, counterparts. Uh, we really worked to change the philosophy and the operating principles so that this is much less expensive to do the same mission as a manned platform. Going forward into 2025, what should we expect from Circo, and what are you really excited for? So we're really excited for the demo. Um, if we get to do everything that DARPA is planning on doing, it's going to be really, really something to behold. Uh, a lot of travel, a lot of miles on the vessel. Um, we're also hoping to start uh, design studies and a next rev. Um, we're capable of building these uh, ships in very large numbers across tier three shipyards without much improved infrastructure and also maintain them the same way. Uh, so we're kind of looking at this as maybe like the destroyer escort of the future, something that if you prove out and you build enough to get the prototypes in the water and get experience with them, if the time and need, you could build a lot of them very rapidly and they would add a, a lot of capability without a lot of resource pull on the Navy or their tier one shipyards. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. And since we don't have much capability in our tier, tier one shipyards, this is a good thing. I mean, in the article of the war zone, they say they can, these can be built at rail yards. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you could bring in civilian boat manufacturing on a large scale, on a very large scale. So, the first step, USX Defiant hits the water. DARPA is at it again. We love our boys at DARPA. A bunch of destroyer escorts, smaller vessels, asset disbursement while maintaining capability and not endangering American lives. This is a great way for fleet expansion in a way that we aren't capable of right now because of our lack of shipbuilding capabilities in this country. I hope this is a, is a successful program. Of course, I'm going to link everything here. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see what uh, this program, how it unfolds and the things that it's going to be capable of. And our boys at DARPA... We gotta love them. They're the best. That's what I got. I wanted to bring this to you. Defiant. Love the name, too. If you like it, hit the like. Maybe subscribe. Share it with a friend. Let everyone know. Defiant is around. You have a good day.